let f of x is equal to 2 into x defined on the close interval 1 comma 4 and the partition p which consists of the points 1 comma 2 comma 3.5 comma 4 that is the partition p consists of 4 points 1 2 3.5 4 we are going to find upf and lpf of the given function f which is defined on the close interval 1 to 4 with respect to the partition p so this is the x axis and the y axis we have plot the points 1 2 3.5 4 and we know that these points 1, 2, 3.5, 4 are nothing but partition points which will be always on the x axis. These are the four partitions. These are the three sub intervals because the partition points are four. Whenever we have four partition points, will be having only three sub intervals. This is I1. The first sub interval is from 1 to 2. The second sub interval is from 2 to 3.5. The third sub interval is from 3.5 to 4. And remember that the length of the each sub interval is not the same. What is the given function? The given function is y equals to f of x which is equal to 2x. Now we are going to find the value of the function. Since the partition points are 1, 2, 3.5, 4, we are going to find the value of the function at the partition points because the infimum and the supremum are nothing but the value of the function at the partition points. Therefore, let us find the values when x is equal to x. What is y? f of x that is equal to 2x. Therefore, let us write 2x here. Now, let us take the point. This is the point origin 0, 0. Now, what is the first partition point 1? So, when x is equal to 1, what is f of x? 2 into x that is 2 into 1 is 2. And this point will be 1, comma 2. What is second partition point 2? That is when x is equals to 2, what is the value of the function at 2? That is f of 2. What is f of 2? 2 into 2, 4. And this point represents 2, comma 4. Then the third partition point is 3.5. When x is 3.5, what is the value of y or what is the value of f of 3.5? That is equal to 2 into 3.5. What is 2 into 3.5? 7. Therefore, this point represents 3. 0.5 comma 7. The last partition point is 4. When x is equal to 4, what is y value or what is f of x? That is f of 4. f of 4 is 2 into 4. That is equal to 8. And hence, this point represents 4 comma 8. The given function f of x is equal to 2x. And the function f of x is nothing but a strike line passing through all these five points, namely 0, 0, 1, 2, 2, 4, 3.5, 7, 4, 8. Thus, this is a given curve. The given curve is a strike line. That is, the given function is a strike line passing through these points. What is L of P comma F? That is lower Riemann sum or lower dot box sum. That is equals to sigma I equal to 1 to N M I delta I. 
here n is equal to 3. Why n equal to 3? Since we are given 4 partition points, we will be having only 3 sub intervals i1, i2, i3. Therefore, this is 3. And hence, that is equals to m1 delta 1 plus small m2 delta 2 plus small m3 delta 3 because small m1, small m2, small m3 stand for infimum of the intervals i1, i2, i3 respectively. Now let us find the length of each sub interval. This is the first sub interval. It is from 1 to 2. What is the length of the sub interval? The length of the sub interval is the positive difference of the end points. That is 2 minus 1. Delta 1 is 2 minus 1 is 1. Therefore delta 1 is 1. Coming to the second sub interval. This is the second sub interval. What is the length of this sub interval? That is the positive difference of the end points. What are end points? 2 and 3.5. When you say positive, we have to take the greatest value first, then the least value. Therefore, here delta 2 will be 3.5 minus 2. What is 3.5 minus 2? That is 1.5. Therefore, delta 2 is 1.5. Coming to the third sub interval, it is from 3.5 to 4. What is the distance here? The distance is nothing but the length of the sub interval. The distance is 0 0.5 because it is from 3.5 to 4. The difference is nothing but 0 0.5. And hence, the length of this sub interval is delta 3. Delta 3 is equal to 4 minus 3.5. That is delta 3 equal to 0 0.5. Thus we have found delta 1 value that is 1. Delta 2 that is 1.5. Delta 3 that is equal to 0 0.5. We are going to find the value of M1, M2, M3. M1, M2, M3 are the infimum of the sub intervals I1, I2, I3 respectively. We are asked to find the area of this region under the given curve bounded by the x axis starting from 1 to 4 because the interval is 1 to 4 and the lines x is equal to 1 and x is equal to 4 that is this region you have to find now we are going to find the lpf when you say lpf we have to fill the three sub intervals with rectangles Coming to the first sub interval, here the part of this curve is from 2 to 4, which is the least value? 2 is the least value because we are going to find the infimum. Therefore, we have to fill this region with the rectangle starting from the x axis up to this point 2. Coming to the second sub interval, we are going to fill this region with the rectangle. And the part of this curve is from 4 to 7. Since we are going to find the infimum, what is the least value between 4 and 7? 4 is the least value. Therefore, we are going to fill this region with the rectangle, which is starting from the x-axis with the range 2 to 3.5 up to 4. This is the one. Coming to the third sub interval, the third sub interval, the part of the curve is from 7 to 8. We are going to find the infimum. So, between 7 and 8, which is the least value? 7. And hence, we are going to fill this region with the rectangle starting from x axis with the range 3.5 to 4 up to 7. We are going to find the values of small m1, small m2, small m3 where small m1, small m2, small m3 are the infimum of the sub interval i1, i2, i3 where the sub interval i1 is close interval 1 comma 2, i2 is the close interval 2 to 3.5, i3 is the close interval 3.5 to 4.
to get the value of m1 let us come to the first sub interval this is the first sub interval the part of the curve is from this point to this point the interval is from 1 to 2 since we are going to find the infimum we have to take the value of the function at 1 that is first we have to fill this region with rectangle up to the point 2. Y value is 2. X value is 1 but Y value is 2. So let us fill it. Yes, we have filled. But remember that this part is left free. To get M2, consider the sub interval 2 to 3.5. Here starting point is 2, ending point is 3.5. We have filled this rectangle from x-axis up to this point 4 because f of 2 equals to 4. Coming to third sub-interval, the third sub-interval we are going to fill this region with rectangle starting from x-axis up to this point. What is M1? M1 is the value of the function at this point. That is 1. The point value is 1. That is value of the function F at the first point. Because it is an increasing function. For increasing function, infimum is always the value of the function at the starting point. The supremum is the value of the function at the end point. Therefore, M1 is the value of the function at 1. That is F of 1. What is F of 1? 2. That is its value is 2. What about M2? Value of the function at this point 2. At this point 2. Because second sub interval is from 2 to 3.5. Therefore, M2 is the value of the function at 2. That is 2, 2 is 4. What is M3? M3 is the value of the function at 3.5. At 3.5. That is F of 3.5 is equal to 2 into 3.5 which is 7. And hence, the value of M1 is 2. Value of M2 is 4, M3 is 7 and delta 1 is 1, delta 2 is 1.5, delta 3 is 0.5. Substitute all these values we get 2 into 1 plus 4 into 1.5 plus 7 into 0 0.5 because M1 is value of the function at 2, 1 that is 2 into 1 is 2, M2 value of the function at 2 that is f of 2 equal to 4 m3 is value of the function at 3.5 f of 3.5 is 2 into 3.5 is 7 delta 1 is 1 delta 2 is 1.5 delta 3 is 0 0.5 now simplify this 2 into 1 is 2 4 into 1.5 is 6 7 into 0 0.5 is 3.5 that is equal to 11.5 therefore lower Riemann sum is 11.5 Now we are going to find upper Riemann sum or upper dot box sum namely u of p comma f what is the formula the formula is u of p comma f that is upper dot box sum or upper Riemann sum of f with respect to the partition p that is equals to the sum that is the sigma i equal to 1 to n capital m i delta i here n is equal to 3 the reason is since we have only 3 sub intervals Therefore, sigma i equal to 1, 2, 3, capital M i, delta i. We expanding this, we get capital M 1, delta 1, plus capital M 2, delta 2, plus capital M 3, delta 3. Where M 1, M 2, M 3 are the supremum of 
the first sub interval second sub interval and the third sub interval respectively we are going to find the values of m1 m2 m3 since we know the values of delta 1 delta 2 delta 3 we are going to find the values of capital m1 capital m2 capital m3 we have to find the capital m1 what is capital m1 supremum of first sub interval consider the first sub interval this first sub interval the part of the curve is from this part from here to here the x values are from 1 to 2 between these two what is supremum what is the greatest value 2 is the greatest value therefore we have to fill this region from x axis to this point to this point coming to m2 to get m2 here the part of the region is from here to here of x values are the 2 to 3.5 we are going to find the supremum therefore we have to find the greatest value namely 3.5 therefore we are going to fill this region with the rectangle from the x axis up to this point m3 to get m3 coming to the interval in this interval we are going to fill this region with rectangle starting from x axis to this point because the interval is from 3.5 to 4 now 4 is the supremum greatest value therefore we are going to fill this region with rectangle from x axis yes now what is m1 m1 is the value of the function at 2 that is f of 2 what is f of 2 2 into 2 4 what is m2 m2 is the value of the function at 3.5 what is the value of 3.5 f of 3.5 that is equal to 2 into 3.5 that is 7 how do you get m3 m3 is the value of the function at 4 that is f of 4 f of 4 is 2 into 4 2 into 4 is 8 thus m1 is 4 m2 is 7 m3 is 8 and hence substitute all the values of m1 m2 m3 delta 1 delta 2 delta 3 we get m1 is 4 m2 is 7 m3 is 8 and delta 1 is 1 delta 2 is 1.5 delta 3 is 0 0.5 and hence if we simplify this we get 18.5 as upper Riemann sum the lower Riemann sum is 11.5 oscillatory sum of a function f corresponding to the partition p denoted by omega of p comma f or o of p comma f and is defined as omega of p comma f is equals to u of p comma f minus l of p comma f that is upper Riemann sum minus lower Riemann sum